Right, welcome back to the channel everyone. So I'm deliberately going to stand right up close to the camera. So this very fast lens, uh, it's a, an f1.4 prime, deliberately uh, blurs out the motorcycle, uh, which is my new bike, which is in the background. So we're back here at the church. The church is where we discussed selling my last bike, the Vosges. I talked about the part X values and all that uh, interesting stuff. Loads of comments on that video. Um, some of them nice, some of them sharing the, your own experience. So thank you if you did comment. Um, some of them actually not that nice, but nevertheless, everyone's entitled to an opinion. Some people said I should stop being so materialistic and impulsive, and, you know, stop feeding the dealers. You know, it's your own fault sort of thing. Make sure you keep your bike for three, four, five years. The longer you keep it, the more value you'll get out of it. That is actually true. I, I can't argue at all with that point. However, I do like to change my bikes often. So what I've done is, I've done things a little bit differently this time from a financial perspective. I'm gonna tell you exactly how. Okay, so I've got some notes here. Point number one, I've this time bought a motorcycle that's nearly new. So I haven't paid the new price. The saving I've made is about 1,300 pounds on the new price. I have also, uh, got the first service included with the dealer as part of the deal. So that saved another, depending on what part of the country you're in, saved another 150 to 300 pounds. So therefore, I think the saving probably goes up to the sort of 1500 ballpark because I've got no on the road charges. It's cheaper than the purchase price. I've saved on the first service and someone else has, has sort of taken the initial hit in taxes and import duties and all those things uh, and then the dealer market, all those things that can't be helped when you buy a brand new bike. I also have got the remaining warranty on the bike. I've got a warranty from the manufacturer and I've also got a three month dealer warranty because I did actually buy this bike from a dealer. Furthermore, I've actually got a special clause when it comes to purchasing this motorcycle from the dealer. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that later in the video. So that actually protects me a little bit. It's, it's called a depreciation clause. I'm not gonna go into it now, but I will get back to that at the end of the video. Oh, the other thing to mention is I've made a purposeful decision not to spec up this motorcycle with all of the extras that are available for it. So my last two bikes, I splurged on the accessory catalog and I ended up really putting 500 plus pounds in accessories into both the bikes. Didn't get a penny of that back when I sold it. I, okay, the Royal Enfield Meteor, I, I was able to sell some of them off, but at hugely reduced price compared to what I paid. So this time round, I've bought a bike again, where someone else has done the specking on my behalf, and I'm not gonna invest as much into it extras. I might buy some luggage. That's, that's the, the total of what I'll spend on the bike. I'm gonna keep it standard, but with the extras that the other person has fitted. Okay, right, I'm gonna turn the camera around now, just so I can change the camera angles up without you guys seeing the bike. Okay, so we changed camera angles. I'm gonna introduce another thing that I've purchased to go alongside my new retro motorcycle. And I've actually bought a new lid. I've been using a Shark S900 since 2019 as my primary go-to uh, riding helmet, it's kind of rough and ready. It's had a few scrapes uh, here and there. And I've got a mount on it for a GoPro because when I started the channel, I was doing more pieces, less pieces to camera, sorry, and more pieces filmed on the, on the bike. But I've come around to think that more pieces to camera are probably where I want to go. I want to, I want to get better at presenting to a camera and delivering dialogue. And I think the onboard camera format is so saturated everyone's doing it, especially as a new vlogger, a uh, motor vlogger, that it's probably not something that I can compete in. So I'm gonna go for pieces to camera, maybe the odd bit on the bike. And because of that, I don't need to worry so much about placement of a GoPro on my, ha on my helmet. Now I thought about getting a new lid for quite a while. I did toy with the idea of open face, but to be frank, Susie would have a fit if I had an open face helmet, because even the guy in the a helmet shop near to me or motor dealership he's the helmet specialist believe it or not you can get that he would never wear an open-faced helmet and 
she'd basically be really worried every time I went out if I had an open face helmet on. So I've bought what I think is quite close to an open face helmet, but it's not. So let me introduce, this is my new lid. This is the Nex, which is N-E-X-X. -X, and it's a relatively new brand. So it's a Portuguese company formed in, in 2001. This is a Nex X, uh, is it X? X dot G100. And it's a helmet design that's about two years old. Basically, it's a very uh, pure, it's actually called purist white. It's a very pure design, a spherical retro shape to the helmet. And it's got these customizable peaks and visors. So the visor doesn't actually flip up. It's on a, a, a elasticated band there, an elasticated textile that sort of like pulls into position. You clip it using these pop rivets. You can change the colors of the visor and the peak, but to be honest, a new visor is 45 pounds. The peaks, I think 30 pounds. I bought this helmet as is for 60 quid second hand the guy had bought it and never got along with it i bought it in large it just fits perfectly i took a bit of a risk but i thought with the new bike i want to get a new helmet to go along with it and it's kind of a pearlescent white it's so reflective and sparkly it just looks it just looks wicked i really really like it the other thing i've noticed about buying a new helmet compared to some sort of the older designs and maybe these sports bike focus helmets you get such a huge field of view well, i can see way more out of this uh, than it, my previous helmet, which I really like. Obviously, wind noise is, is not ideal because it's a compromise being a retro style helmet. And you can also wear it with both of these uh, accessory parts removed. So you can have it almost open face, but with the chin protection. So that kind of goes back to what I was saying at the start. I kind of like the fact to have a almost open face helmet, but it's not. Um, so I could potentially wear sunglasses uh, and then just, just have the helmet itself without this uh, visor. So yeah, new lid, fits really well. And if you look at the inside, put it there so hopefully the camera focuses. It's just a really, really nice feeling helmet. It just feels like a quality piece. I only paid 60 pounds for it. Um, it's never been put anywhere on the floor because all of this part is immaculate. So I do actually believe the guy when he said he only wore it once. But anyway, enough about that. I'm gonna move on and we're gonna actually gonna now introduce the motorcycle. So let's put this helmet down. Okay, so the moment's almost upon us. I'm just going to give a quick shout out to the other people who uh, commented, uh, other YouTubers and commenters. Uh, firstly, Two Wheeled Willy, uh, you said in a couple of your videos actually I should get the Super Meteor like yourself. If 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 I have got a Super Meteor behind me, it will be astral green, same as yours. But you said Heart says Sean should get a Super Meteor. Head says 100% he's bought a BSA Gold Star. So let's see, Willie, if you were right. Extra Rider, you said I'd come on along, uh, I'd come on from the Interceptor, which actually I agree with you. I have come on from the Interceptor. Talked about this in a previous video. Last time I rode the Interceptor, it just, it just the magic had sort of faded a little bit for me. Um, and I'll talk about maybe some comparisons between the bike behind me and the Interceptor later on in the video. And finally, you said W800 could be a good shout, Kawasaki. Let's see, let's see. So I'm going to walk backwards to the motorcycle and it will slowly come into shot. Okay, guys, here it is. This is the BSA Gold Star in Highland Green. The price I paid for this motorcycle was £5,495 which as I mentioned earlier is a £1,000 off list price when you add in some other of the savings, about £1,500 saved off buying a new one. This bike had 227 miles on it when I bought it. Uh, it's now got about uh, 300 miles on it. The bike had never been used in the wet. Everything is immaculate underneath. It's particularly clean. It is fitted with two optional extras. One is a fender extender which we can see down here, just to stop some of the muck coming up to the radiator. And at the back of the motorcycle, you've got a classic bike racks, uh, BSA fitment rack, which is about 100 quid um, to buy. I don't know whether I'll keep this or I'll go for a pannier system, but I, I, it's a nice thing to have. And it goes back to what I was saying, I'm not actually gonna option up this bike myself. 
The other thing which we did have on here is a windshield. It had an MRA highway touring screen. I don't like screens on bikes, so I took the opportunity to get rid of it. It looked okay with the screen, but it just wasn't, wasn't my thing. And I'm happy not to have uh, the screen on the bike. Okay, so we all know the BSA Gold Star isn't a perfect motorcycle. Whatever you're going to say in the comments negatively about this bike, I already know. So trust me, I've followed this bike since the launch in 2021. Obviously, BSA is a new to market company. That's a risk. There was delays getting this bike to the market. It took 18 months or so for the first bikes to be delivered. And I actually reviewed this bike early on and I did such a critical review of this bike that I actually pissed off BSA and the dealer. Uh, so I kind of upset a lot of people with my remarks on the Gold Star. It, I, it, I've gone into this now knowing the bike's flaws. So obviously you've got the large radiator, which upsets quite a few people. Um, you've got the lack of a center stand. There's not even a fitment bracket on the frame for center stand. That is also a problem. The, the rear shocks are, are horrifically under damped. So if you press on a bit, it'll squirm and bounce about. There's actually linear springs inside these stanchions here, not progressive. So the ride actually can be quite firm on potholes and things like that. This welding around the rear subframe, again, is not quite as neat as some of this bike's contemporaries. And of course, you've got the engine casings, which aren't quite up there with the Interceptor uh, finesse. You know, the Interceptor is polished and it has a, a stamp Royal Enfield in it, whereas the BSA has powder coat and the BSA stickers, which is a bit of a letdown, to be honest. Um, but these are things I know about the bike. These are things that you probably know about the bike. But now I'll tell you some of the things you probably don't know. Uh, the paint on the tank is pretty thin. Uh, if you put your key in the filler cap, which is quite fiddly to get off, and you lift it up by the filler cap, uh, it'll actually can drop off. And then combining that dropped filler cap with thin paint on the tank means it'll bounce down the tank and cause a lot of damage. So you've got to be careful there. You've got engine management light issues with these bikes uh, because of the cold weather climate, I assume. Um, and you've also got a very small chance that your headlight will shatter. It seems to be fitted in there quite tightly and a few of the headlights have been replaced under warranty. Okay, obviously I didn't buy this bike for its bad points. It is probably the most authentic 90s, 50s, 1960s retro motorcycle available on the market today. It's the only modern retro with a big single. I absolutely loved my Royal Enfield Meteors single cylinder engine. This, okay, it's a bit of an over-square engine, it's not quite got the thump of the Meteor, but it's a bigger version of that riding experience, bigger displacement, and I just can't beat that. It, it won MCM's Retro Motorcycle, the best retro of the year. I actually think it deserves it. When you're riding this bike, it just feels like an old-school experience, and that's actually what I wanted. When you ride an Interceptor, you can make a transition from a three or four cylinder modern bike, get on an Interceptor, and, and that's quite a smooth transition because you've got that smooth 649cc parallel twin in the Interceptor. On this, it just feels so different. It's got vibration coming up, but it's not a buzzy vibration that kind of pees you off when you're riding along. It just vibrates with character, and it just feels amazing. I'm just, I've only ridden it 50 miles. I just absolutely love it. The magical thing about this BSA Gold Star is it was designed as a retro bike. So from the ground up, this has been designed to invoke that feeling of character uh, and going back in time, which I personally love. I love just to potter about on a motorcycle. I don't feel the need to overtake. I come back from riding rested and relaxed and I get to see everything like this beautiful church. I get to take in the sights and the sounds and the smells of being out on the open road. You don't feel like you have to overtake everything. And that's the experience of riding a, basically a big single retro. It's the only bike on the market that is a big single retro. Um, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's a 650cc and I feel for me, it's a natural step forward from my 350cc Royal Enfield Meteor. And you might think, oh, well, obviously the Super Meteor is the step up from your 350 Meteor. But for me, it's about the single. And that's the selling point of this bike is that it had a single. It was always the single. 
when I looked at this bike at Motorcycle Live, I saw that big single cylinder and single exhaust pipe. I just thought, yeah, it's so cool. And unlike some of the other bikes, the Kawasaki Z650 RS, for example, and Yamaha's XSR 700, which I also test rode as a potential purchase, those bikes are cross-platform from the MT-07 and the Z650. This bike is just totally unique. It's designed as a retro, and I really love that about it. Obviously, I talked about the Interceptor. The Interceptor's probably got better suspension. Uh, the engine's a bit smoother. Definitely the engine looks better on the Interceptor. Uh, the switch gear on the new Interceptors is nicer. It's got aluminium switch gear borrowed off the Super Meteor. But I tell you what, where the BSA absolutely dominates, it's got some amazing things. The fuel tank, the shape, the colours, the, oh, having this British racing green, or Highland green as they call it, and that raised BSA badge, and this really lovely filler cap, even if it is a bit of a pig to take on and off, that is just such a standout feature. The seat, I think, looks stunning. You've also got better wheels. I think, you, I think the wheels are nicer on this than on the Interceptor, because the Interceptor is now converted to black uh, wire spoke wheels. The tyres on the BSA, as standard, the Pirelli Sport Comps, uh, which is a retro looking but quality tyre. Interceptor owners always changing out their Seat tyres. You don't have to do that on this. Here you've got full, not watered down, but full strength Brembo brakes. The front is actually surprisingly strong. On the Interceptor, you've got Bybury, so it's the sort of watered down version of Brembo. And the other thing is the clocks. They're just a, they're just a work of art on this bike. I just love them. They're, they're, they're just lovely and nice to look at. You've got that reverse sweep starting at one o'clock on the speedo and the rev counter. It just really, really looks, it just looks the part. And I think in those respects, it does beat the Interceptor. One of the other comments I got about this bike was, I'm too young to be riding a bike that's dragging its ass around on the floor. Um, I need something a bit more fast and a bit more powerful. And I kind of just totally disagree with that. I love plodding about. I'm in my mid thirties. I don't think you have to be sort of 60 plus to have a BSA. And I'm really proud to own one. I, I absolutely love it. I think it's a great bike. I'm, I feel like I missed out on the brand the first time round. And here's my chance. I've been given a second chance to get on a BSA. And for that, I'm just, I'm just loving it. As, as I say, I followed these bikes from, from the very start. Whenever I went into the dealership at Midwest Moto, I just saw this bike catching my eye. I, I, just, I just had that turning head whenever I was leaving or coming in. I just really, really admired it. And I waited and waited and waited. And then one came up in the color that I wanted, nearly new condition, as I say. And I just was ready to pull the trigger. What am I gonna do with the Gold Star? Well, I need to give it a name. So at the moment it's Goldie. Susie and I haven't decided on a, on a name for her yet. If you've got any suggestions, I think it should begin with G, but write them down in the comments below. I thought Gloria or some kind of name that goes back in time a little bit to suit the style of the bike. We're going away over winter. I've, I've got a vehicle that can tow a, a motorcycle trailer. I need to get the trailer, but we'll basically be taking the Gold Star with us as we go down into Southern Europe over winter. And I'm hopefully gonna get the experience of riding this bike in dry, warmish weathers in November, December, January, February. So that, if I can pull that plan and pull that off, um, is gonna be an amazing experience, having this bike in that environment uh, over the, the, basically the UK winter, which is the worst period in time. Okay, the, the final point, which I'm gonna talk about today, is the special clause that I mentioned at the start of this video. And the clause is something that Completely Motorcycles offered from August the 1st to September the 16th as part of their deal. If you buy a used bike, you can then trade in the used bike at zero depreciation for what you paid for it against a brand new motorcycle. So obviously that has its downsides in the fact that you're on the hook for a new bike basically. But it does mean that in April, which is when you take delivery of the new bike if ownership experience of this bike goes totally south you know I've got all sorts of problems uh, my headlight falls out and BSA just doesn't help me then I've got what I feel is a little bit of a of a backup plan 
I can take this bike back to the dealership in the same condition. I think there's a 2,000 mile limit. So I can go from 225 miles up to 2,025 miles. And I'll trade it in against, I don't know, what bike could we trade it in against in April next year? A Triumph Scrambler 400X, for example, also in green. I think it's called Khaki Green. So although I don't want to get rid of this bike, I want to go forward with it the ownership experience and put some good miles on it and have a nice time owning it and not get that like impatience to change change bikes i did want to protect myself a little bit with the bsa just in case being a new brand i end up with a friday afternoon bike and everything goes wrong on it um let's hope that doesn't happen and fingers crossed it'll all be really really good the experience all right guys well thanks a lot for listening i'm going to stop the video there appreciate you watching and i will catch you in the next one thank you